the first thing people see is who you are, like your race, what you look like. So I feel like it's very important to know who you are, but still not let that define you. I think identity is so much more than like one thing. I think it's just all everything that I am, kind of like my personality or like things that affect me. If I didn't have the background I have, if I didn't know all the things I have or been through all the things I've been through, I'm pretty sure my art would look very different. I don't like to settle on one thing. Yes, I would like to have one focus that would be my career and income, but I do have many different creative interests. My name is Karini Padilla and I am a fine arts major. My name is Aubrey Ashton. I Advertising, Marketing, Communications major. Hi, I'm Alonza Cruz born and I study fashion design. I'm Zainab Kohli. I'm a fashion business management major specializing in product development. I was born and raised in Dominican Republic. As a kid, to me, art was just something that I was doing just because like my mom wanted me to do. I didn't really take it seriously. Like it was just something me and my sister would go to do. But now moving on, art to me, it's so much more, like it's something that I can walk away from. I started dancing around like five-ish to like eight-ish. Um, so I like started in church, but also my sisters, they had like a program at their high school. So they would like do dance shows every year. There was a girl in my oldest sister's dance show. She did like a, it was kind of like a sexy performance. I shouldn't have been doing it at like eight years old, but I like saw it, I loved it. I went home, put my own little costume on, and I just kind of remade her whole performance. And that was when they realized that I was like taking this stuff seriously. I would still say my drag is a drogeny base because I still keep my facial hair. I just like showing my feminine side. I started around 2016, the first time I went to House of Yes for my friend's birthday. On stage, I'm Ruby and Ari. Um, I might get that name legally changed. Um, <laughs> They're really the same person. Free-spirited, creative, and don't give a fuck. It's just when I put the makeup on, it's like my warrior paint. I don't think I'm like one type of creative. I know a little bit of how to design that I learned on my own, but I do think I've always done like a little bit of everything. I like to write a lot about like my family, um, my like experience, like just whether it's as a Muslim woman or as like a Indian first generation immigrant. I like to make a space for people to do that, so I organize for a nonprofit that does that. New York Embassy Showdown is basically a nonprofit organization where we put on an annual two-day tournament. It brings together Muslim college students from across New York State to compete in different competitions like stand-up comedy, 2D art, short film just different types of creative outlets. So the main audience is Muslim college students, but it's also open to students who aren't Muslim as well. It's just an open space, but specifically for those students because they need the platform that they don't have anywhere else. The reason I organize these events is because I know that I don't have creative platforms like that. People I know don't have creative platforms like that. and. Most of my friends are from these kind of communities, so I know what struggles they face. I think my work has always been for, like it's always people-centered in a sense, creativity and people-centered. The reason why I talk to the freshmen and sophomores who are hijabi Muslims or just Muslims is because I want them to have that person to reach out to if they want help with the internship or if they want a connection. I came here with zero connections, so all those things, even though it's really hard to take out time to do, doing a lot of different things, Someone has to do them. So that's why I've been put into a lot of roles and I'll just do them. Well, I got off in interior design. Now I'm in fashion design. I've always had interest in fashion. Um, when I was growing up, I got my start drawing comic characters. Well, comic female. That's where my start was. And I wanted to be a comic book artist. There are many different things. So fashion, cartoons, um, games, comics, uh, interior design, and then now uh, dancing. 
Ruby is me, honestly. But really, she's me. I'm a free-spirited person. I love to be creative. I like to be bold. I like to change my look. So Ruby is my birthstone, um, a red ruby. Now Inari, my mom said if I was to be born a girl, that was gonna be my name, Inari. The best part about drag is the dressing up and performing. That's the part I really love. And it's something I definitely want to keep in my life, incorporated in my life, even if it's just for fun. It's not only for a performance or to get a check. It's like, I feel good about myself this day and I want to, I want to gender bend. <laughs> like what people find, oh my God, so scandalous. Well, I was a very awkwardly shy kid, so I felt like dance was something, a place that I can go to kind of just let free and um, kind of express who I was. And once I kept doing that and I found a confidence within dancing that kind of funneled over to my regular life and I was able to kind of let loose a little more and get out of my shell. Um, so ready? Yeah. You guys want to do that now? I just feel completely accepted when I kind of just close my eyes and move and I just don't let anyone or let the fact that there's anyone around me affect how I feel and how I move. So when I'm able to get to a point to where I can like block out everything around me, it's just amazing. Best feeling ever. Definitely, I loved watching Missy Copeland, especially growing up in a predominantly white area, uh, going in a predominantly white dance studios. You don't see people that look like you dancing, doing like the contemporary and the ballet. It was always like people expected me to do hip hop. I feel like that just sets the bar higher for me and for what I want to accomplish. I try to stay away from like the negatives and thinking that, oh, because I'm a black woman, I'm not going to be able to get those roles that white woman gets. but. Uh, more so focusing on what I have to do to one day be in that position to get that. What I like the most is just like the days when I'm painting and I forget that I'm even painting and like I don't even eat or anything or like touch my phone and then it's like the day passed and I'm like wow I did that and then the next morning I wake up and I look at what I did I'm like oh that's trash <laughs> never mind I'm moving on <laughs> like uh yeah so you learn so much when you're painting that's something also that I've learned that it's not mostly about what you end up with or it's mostly like what you go through while you're working and what you learn from the painting and the material. I'm thinking of like all the works that I'm gonna do over the summer and how they are tied to my identity and I'm just so excited. My background and how it's connecting to my art was not so much about just where I come from like DR because even though it's it is part of my identity. There is more to me than where I come from. Right now, I feel like it's not taking away from my work. I do feel like at some point it will, but I feel like I know when that will be and I will know when to stop. Well, I have one of my friends, she just graduated and she does feel like at times she's just known as like a black artist. She wants to be known for like more than that choosing somebody's work or just selecting people's work or showing somebody's work just because they're black. I think it's like flat out just no. So I definitely feel like sometimes diversity can be seen as a trend. I feel like a lot of people are trying to take initiative and work with more, you know, African-American artists uh, 
and just of other minorities, but sometimes to me it comes off as not authentic. Like now we're trending, so now people want us on their roster. Um, I just want it to get to a point where it's the norm. If somebody ever just like, sh like shows my work just because I'm a person of color, then I'm going to question whether my work is even good and it's just, it's just going to be something that's like back and forth between is it about my work or is it about who I am? And I would never want it to just be about who I am. I don't want to have the insecurity of like not being, like being hired because I'm that Muslim. So I've been able to build myself enough to know it's me because of my work, not because of anything else. I honestly have not felt outright Islamophobia as much as like people would expect. But obviously I know it still affects me in the back. Like, I may not notice it as much, but I, and I forget I'm even wearing a hijab sometimes, but it's still there. In industry, like, I'm always, again, there's some Indian women, brown women that I see, but all in every single internship, I'm the only, again, hijabi Muslim woman. So they'll ask questions to like probe to find out where I'm from. So I'll say Flushing Queens first, because <laughs> why not let them ask another question? <laughs> but the fact that that's something that people ask outright, like why, you know? Growing up, especially in the black neighborhood, I'm from East Flatbush. So that's um, it's known to be a Caribbean neighborhood. So one sad thing about the islands is they're not progressive. On the Caribbean scene, you know, these are people of color and they want to single me out and other people for our sexual orientation and how we express ourselves. But I'm like, you know, you're still a person of color and we have issues already. So I don't need you as a person of color coming after another person of color for a different thing and further ostracizing. We live in a, such a contradiction of a world. It's like hilarious. And it's, it's funny, I could walk outside like this, but not always because of certain areas. So I'm just trying to understand when it's going to end and when we as a people are going to advance where it's like, you could be who you are and it's like, it's just different interests. I always think like maybe I should be doing, you know, something different, something more, yeah, I guess like secure. Shit that I see. Because I like what I'm doing, so it feels wrong. Like I feel like I shouldn't like it. You already do that. As an immigrant, you come to this country and you're expected to go to college. You're expected to have a career that, ser that pays off parents' struggles, all of the stuff that they've done for you. So it's a lot of pressure. So when I chose, <laughs> when I chose to go to FIT or even wanted to, um, my dad like he kind of just laughed. <laughs> oh God! Like for them it seems like a tailor, and in India tailor isn't a very like respectable trade. It's just it's just a tailor. You didn't go to college for it, you didn't something like that. It, it just wasn't a concept they understood. They wanted me to do something that would obviously make money, coming from a low income family. I feel like I didn't think a career in the creative industry was something that could be done. So, you know, I went off to college, I kind of left dance aside, put that aside. It's usually hard for us creatives to get a legitimate paid career where it's just not laughed upon or it's, it's nothing real. But it is because it does influence. It influences the culture, it influences young minds. No matter how much it's looked down upon, people disregard it as a hobby, it is needed. I feel like if I had someone to mentor me, someone to look up to, I definitely would have took it more seriously, myself more seriously. But I'm glad to be back doing it, so it all works out in the end. Hopefully in the future, I'm like, I have my own studio. I don't see myself not making anything, not making work, so I'm pretty sure because of that, because I really don't see myself walking away from art, it has to, my future has to be something related to it. My next step is trying to get signed with like an agency so I can like go on more auditions and stuff. That's kind of what my focus is now. Since I'm graduating in May, it's so soon, it's scary, but I have faith. I kind of know that I'm capable. It's kind of my mantra. I'm here, I'm ready, I'm capable. So um, just never losing confidence and always trying and never giving up no matter what happens. I feel like 
things will happen when you have that kind of mindset. So I don't let it get the best of me. Well, my ultimate goal is to be a fashion designer on my company. Do I see myself doing drag? Um, I'm satisfied with where it is. I'm not trying to be this big queen and like tour the world for that. I can be that living proof. You can live as yourself and be happy. And there are multiple parts of us that we are allowed to explore, we can explore, and we can become what the hell ever we want to be from that or whatever else is in our life that we're interested in. I think I've always just done very different scattered things. So even I think in the future I might try different careers because of that or do different things through one career. I feel like we're always told to do one thing, like do one career, do one major. Even like at FIT, they don't let you choose more than one major, but I feel like we're so much more than that and we can do so much more.